grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your Spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the Spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both, both Jews and proselytes, Greeks and, and Arabs. In, In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? What does, what this, does what this mean? mean? What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In, in the, the last, last days it will be, be God declares, that, that I will pour, pour out my spirit upon all flesh. flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the, and the moon to blood, blood before, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two of the scripture lessons, the one from Acts, read so well by our choir, and the other from John, which have been chosen for this Sunday, explain the happenings of this festival day in and around Jerusalem. They are scenarios frozen in time. The first lesson, on the other hand, the one from Romans, is part of an ongoing theological discussion about the Spirit and her workings. Paul puts together the events of his own life linked to the mission and the work of Jesus Christ. In this conversation, Paul braids his own life around the work of the early church. 
and so they come together. We find meeting Paul in the eighth chapter of Romans as he's describing to the believers in Rome the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. How does the Spirit of God influence your daily living? And he says, I think we should begin at the rebellion of us humans from God. Yes, even, he says, creation suffered when Adam rebelled in the garden. For God told him right there, cursed is the ground because of you. Now, the ancient people felt strongly that sin and death entered into the relationship in the Garden of Eden, not only between God and humans, but that the entire creation was experiencing a bondage to decay. Creation was going down with humans. Or as Paul puts it, creation is groaning in labor pains until now. Even the curse given to Eve in childbirth, as all of us were thrown out of the garden. And Paul makes the point quickly that creation and humanity share the same pain. The entire order of creation by God, human and animal and plant, is all now out of sync. But... The first glimmer of the work of the Pentecost spirit, today's spirit, indwelling in the creation and in the people, the spirit coming back in, is a vision he remembers from Isaiah. That there's going to be, says Isaiah in the 26th chapter, a new heaven. There's going to be a, a new earth. This spirit is somehow going to do something so the prophet saw a new world which will match our recovered spirit-filled condition, one for us, Isaiah said, by a child out of Bethlehem, whom Paul read into the text, whom he believes is Jesus Christ. That as this braiding between Paul's life and the church is going on, Paul begins to open up to the thought that perhaps the lead into this spirit is Jesus Christ. So my friends, this morning there are two parts of the Trinity. They've been working together. God as creator, the Son as savior, to bring creation and salvation for us into proper alignment again. Second thought in Romans this morning is the hope that we Christians have that this is going to happen. For what we observe in the creation of God, in verse 24 he says, for in hope we were saved, and we hope for what we did not see. Now, if you want something, and you want something badly, you hope for it. When that possession gets into your hand, or that possession is beside you, and you see it, and it's part of you, you no longer have to hope for it. Rather, it is now yours. Religious hope, Paul defines, as fixing our expectation on the things that are yet unseen. Hope, therefore, is the expectation of what Christ will yet do. Martin Luther's large catechism in the explanation of the third article of the Creed uses the words of Hebrews 11. Now, my brethren, faith is the assurance of things Hope for the conviction of things not yet seen. By faith and by trust, we live in hope for that which is not yet available to us, which is the full disclosure 
of God's will in our lives. Paul is beginning to get the understanding of the Spirit, God of creation, Jesus of salvation. Hmm, what is yet to come? There's something going to happen. And so Paul concludes all of creation, including humans, wait in expectation for the fulfillment of what Jesus began. This anticipation means to me that we live in faith-filled assurance of things that are still hoped for. Finally, we turn to the work of John, the work of the Advocate. The Spirit of God is to make prayerful intercession for us while we wait for the giving of the Spirit. Paul says it is a gift of this Advocate to help us in our prayers and in our words. For the desires we have, whatever desires we have that are yet fulfilled, even those things we cannot verbalize, the Spirit stands ready. So the work of the Spirit intercedes, Paul says, with sighs too deep for words. And God searches our hearts, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit. So, now Paul discovers the work of the Spirit. Creation, salvation, work of the Spirit reaches over our awareness of the pain of creation, of those things that are wrong, but the Spirit bridges for us to adopt us as God's children and supports our trust, our faith for things that are hoped for, which are yet unseen. So, as we live in the expectation of Jesus Christ to return to us, then the work of the Spirit of God, the third part of this Trinity, the Holy Spirit, moves deeply into our being for now we realize that God is in the middle of whatever we encounter. So as we continually struggle with sighs to remember our relationship with God, the Spirit is there, the creation is there, the Savior is there with our sisters and brothers in Christ. And so this morning... We cry with the church of all the ages. Come, come Holy Spirit. Fill us with that mighty wind, with that amazing power. The Spirit is such a part of us. We remember today, with that Spirit of God, you are ever near, ever complete. It brings us to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
trusting the Spirit's power, we pray for the church, the world, and all of God's creation. <clears throat> for the church, as it receives your Holy Spirit and shares its hope in Christ, for advocates of truth and forgiveness, <clears throat> and for perseverance in prayer. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, for their priest, John, for Holy Spirit Lutheran Church and their interim pastor, Fred, and for Reformation Lutheran Church and their pastor, Stephen, and for our own members we remember this week, David Podiker, Kay Podiker, Larry, Lars, and Eric Podiker, Mary Ramos, Charles and Susan Randazzo, and our call committee. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> for the creation as life takes root and grows, for the earth and all planets, for the sun, moon, and stars, for the natural wonders in, among, and beyond us. Hear us, O God. <clears throat> for the nations as they seek guidance, for government and tribal leaders, for international organizations, for translators and interpreters, for prophets and peacemakers. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember and give thanks for those who are actively keeping world peace stationed around the globe, and for all those women and men who have made the ultimate sacrifice for us to be free to worship as we choose this day. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> for those who suffer as they long for healing, for those who are lonely or forgotten, for those who are ill, especially Larry, Elroy, Tom, Dorothy, Tom, Kristen, David, and Brian, for veterans, military personnel, and those who advocate on their behalf. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> for this worshiping community, for acolytes and ushers, readers and intercessors, musicians and artists, for all ministries of hospitality, and for those who cannot be with us this day. Hear us, O oh God. We remember saints led by your spirit open our eyes to your work in the world and inspire hope for the world to come. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, gracious God, and those prayers known only to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Will you share in that peace, please?